So that if you were emitting things from a stationary source of air pollution, you needed to get permits from a federal agency in order to do it. And if you were in an area that already had a lot of pollution, which was pretty much everywhere in the country, you weren't supposed to get that permit if what you were doing was increasing the amount of pollution. If you were putting more stuff out than you were putting before. Well, the problem the agency addressed was what, what's a stationary source of pollution? Suppose you've got a factory with 10 smokestacks. Now, those 10 smokestacks are producing at a given point in time a certain amount of pollution. And let's just assume that the agency is okay with the factory producing that amount of pollution. Problem is you don't want to get more pollution out. Well, the factory looks at its 10 smokestacks and says, well, you know, eight of those smokestacks are working pretty well. Two of them really stink. Two of those smokestacks are others producing way more pollution. We can actually do better if we shut down two of our smokestacks, move all of the production to the other eight. The total amount of stuff coming out of our factory will be less once we do that. But smokestacks six, seven, and nine will have slightly more stuff coming out of them at the end. That's all offset by the fact that we've shut down the two lousy smokestacks, but we'd like to get a permit to allow us to do this. If a stationary source means every single opening out of which pollution comes, they can't do it. Because if smokestacks six, seven, and nine are gonna be higher after this plan than before, you can't give them a permit for it. But if you count the stationary source as the entire plant, then you're golden because the plant as a whole is emitting less after the plan than before. And the Environmental Protection Agency went back and forth several times through several different presidential administrations about whether it thought it could interpret the statutory term stationary source to mean the whole factory or whether it had to be each individual smokestack. They finally settled on, let's treat the factory as one source. We're gonna draw an imaginary bubble over the entire factory, and that's gonna count as a single stationary source. That was challenged in court, and that case, the Supreme Court described this two-step inquiry. It said, first we're gonna ask, hmm, does the statute clearly resolve this? As we look at the term stationary source, is it obvious to us that it means either the whole factory or an individual smokestack or anything? No, nah, it doesn't, no answer leaps forth. So that moves us to the second step of the inquiry. Is the agency's result here reasonable? Is it, is it, is it so far off the map that we're gonna reverse? Nah, it's fine. Now, there was actually a great deal of precedent for that kind of approach before 1984 in a certain class of legal disputes where the agency wasn't just interpreting the law abstractly in the air, but was applying a legal term to a particular set of facts. Occasionally, before 1984, not frequently, but occasionally, Courts would treat pure or abstract questions of law as also appropriate for deference. After a multi-factor, all things considered, we think this is one of the cases where there's good reason to give the agency view some weight.